Welcome to the Rebel Road Show. How many tulips is too many tulips? We're talking with people making money off the beaten path. Let's kick it over to Madeline, who's got some drinks for us. Tequila gin. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting paid for this too? Dope. <laughs> Every shoot's almost Firefest, right? We're a picture of a sandwich away from just being canceled. Every shoot. Cheers. All right. CP, thanks for making the trek nice out here. Sweet, man. Appreciate no problem. it. No problem. Appreciate it. So for those who don't know, you run Knicks Fan TV. You're the you're the creator of it. You're the yep. face of it. You, my friend, have disrupted the biggest sports market that there is. The most cutthroat competitive market there is and forced your way in to, to be like a real voice. Here we go. Special edition of Knicks Fan TV Live presented by Manscaped. From humble beginnings on YouTube to now you have appearances on ESPN. You have a post game show on NBA radio coming on. You got 50,000 subs on YouTube and a, and a growing fan base every day. Did you ever dream that this would start when you were interviewing people outside of the garden. Well, it starts when I started a sports blog, right? It's called Talking New York Sports. So it was written content and we started covering all the New York sports. And it was me and my friends. And because sports talk is just something that we did. And I, I tell the story all the time is that, you know, I grew up on, on Mike and the Mad Dog. Good afternoon, everybody. Which was to me. Me as well, yeah. The start. Of sports talk radio you know all these shows now whether it's first take or skip and shannon all the guys with you know the two pundits that started with, with mike and the mad dog back in the early 90s and, and no one's was, been as good as them no one's been no one no has one been not even close no one has been as good as them and i just remember going back you know i go back to like take your kid to work day and me and my dad would go into the city and he used to work right across the street from uh from msg in the office you know, the radio would be down low, but you could always hear Mad Dog, like, high-pitched and screaming. I mean, why waste my time? Every single freaking year, I get myself juiced up with this stupid team, and at 43 years of age and three kids, I'm not for ready. <laughs> yeah. this, so I'm like, what's going on with this? And over time, I just became so, you know, obsessed with, like, FAN, ESPN radio. I would go to sleep listening to it. I would wake up listening to it in the car listening to it. And that was always the foundation of my sports fandom. Yeah. And so for me, I just saw the opportunity was there to build something in the digital age. And if you look at mainstream media, you know, look, the Knicks haven't been a, a, anything to talk about in the last 20 something years. Right. right. You flip on ESPN, they're laughing at the Knicks, or or it's the latest rumor, or it's the latest Dolan did this, right? Every year you travel the country and you go to New York and do people like, you think our team sucks. I'm like, uh, yeah, I only think that because they suck. <laughs> right. In the Twitter in the Twitter sphere, we call it LOL Knicks because it's yeah. just it's just that clickbait. You yeah, know? the Knicks are used. They're used. They like right. to rile up our fan base. It's instant yeah. engagement. Yeah. It's yeah, it clicks for Knicks is is definite, yeah. and it's hard to to know what's real and what's not. We, we take a lot of abuse. Katrin, do. Katrin, do we take a lot of abuse as Knicks fans? I'm a Yankees fan for a reason. I earned the Yankees because I'm a diehard Knicks fan. Right, exactly. The Yankees is like the, the Zorbe to, to cleanse the palate yeah. of a bad Knicks season. No question. No, <laughs> man, no nice. question, man. They, they keep us going, you know, and, and so, so yeah, so you turn on the mainstream and, and it's all fluff. It's nothing much. And even you go to the Knicks local channel on MSG and on a non-game night, there's really no Knicks content. So I found myself uninterested in, in even watching these platforms. And I talked about FAN earlier, but nowadays, because the team isn't so good, they don't really talk about that as much. They're yeah. talking about the other sports and the other hot topics. So there was a white space to talk about the Knicks um, capitalizing on this 24-7 news cycle that we have, this global connectivity that we have as sports fans, because... To me, a, a diehard Knicks fan, it, it, there's really none like it when it comes to talking basketball and talking about your team. Right. You know, and, and we're all over the globe. And so I just saw a white space to create a platform to bring us together and, and kind of hold court, hold therapy, if you will. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's never been a fan base that's deserved a drink like Knicks fans. So part of our show is we have a bartender uh, in our midst here. So Katrin, she's a long long life Knicks fan. She's been to playoff games in the golden nice, era nice. with 
Patrick Ewing and yeah. Oak and Mason. My dad every- went to Georgetown, watched nice. him play there. Like a significant part of my life is being a Knicks fan. What are we drinking? So I was going to make a pomegranate martini for you. Now, here's a fun fact about the martini. The martini was invented in New York, actually, in 1912 at the Knickerbocker Hotel. So it's all full circle. All full circle. That's full circle right there. It's a little bit of fun trivia here. CP, what's your drink of choice? Uh, Whiskey. A little whiskey ginger ale. All right. We we can definitely help you out with that. So... Katrin, Katrin was living that good life seeing Michael Jordan, but you, a lot good of tears, life. a lot of tears. Yeah, it's been rough. It's been rough. It's hard out here for us, man. It's an interesting time for you to to kind of have built this audience mm. because I really think that, you know, the Knicks fortune is changing and you put in, you put in the grunt work during yeah. the bad years, yeah. which is great. And you do a really great job of sifting through all the bullshit and really helping Knicks fans keep their sanity. Sometimes we want things that might not be the right fit. And it's just like the patience just isn't there anymore. Yeah. It's like rebuild number seven. Yeah, you're right, man. The patience isn't there. All, all the years of losing and, and all the years of mismanagement. Right. It's uh, it's like it's like a PTSD, you yeah. know, so so we're, we're living and dying on every moment. And so I understand that. And I think that's why, you know, the platform appeals to so many people because they can call in and, and still be heard. Right. And I'm not going to put them down. I'm not going to, you know, say, you know, tell them that's a terrible take. Everybody's take is, is welcome on the show. Uh, we'll laugh at some. We'll we'll react to some. It, it all depends. But either way, it, it really is like therapy. I don't think I get paid enough for doing what I do. But, you know, it just comes with the territory. Uh, I look at it as, as a media company. When I introduce myself now, I say, you know, Knicks Fan TV, it's, it's a media company. It's a, it's a media channel. And, and, you know, our content mix is reflective of that. It's not just, yes, the, the live streams can be a little bit uh, unstructured. But we try to mix up our content. We we try to keep it serious, and and we bring on the experts, right? Yeah. My channel is the only channel where you can have an Alan Hahn from an MSG network, an Ian Begley who's a Knicks insider from SNY. You'll have a Mark Berman from New York Post. They'll have a Fred Katz who covers the team from the Athletic. So I bring in all the guys who have inside paths to the team to give the fans that perspective that that I don't have. You know, when it comes to the draft, we bring in the experts who are covering these prospects. So yeah. we try to give the fans everything on the team, whether it's, you know, the ins and outs on a daily basis or the draft, free agency, whatever the case may be. Right. Mm-hmm. When you started out, um, what what was the content like? Well, let me back it up, right? Because uh, Arsenal Fan TV and some of the other Premier League fan channels was kind of the inspiration in terms of how I was going to craft it in the digital on-demand age. And so I had a tripod, I took my phone out, and the night of the draft in 2017, I went out to MSG to interview fans. And at the time, during that day, there was rumors going around that the Knicks were interested in trading Porzingis. There was rumors of Mm. Phil Jackson wanted to get Devin Booker, trade into Phoenix. There was a Boston trade out there. So there was good content to, to be had to go out there and interview fans. So. Uh, I got good content before the draft, and then then we drafted Frank. Oh. <laughs> then we drafted Frank, and uh, then it became more therapy at yes. the end of the night. So that was the first episode, and then then I started doing recording my post game reactions for each game, and I said, you know, this just takes too long. I'm a one man show. Yeah, you know, I got a job. I don't have time. To- yeah, what was the day job? The day job at the time I was an IT consultant with the, wow. with the big four consulting company. So I was busy. Yeah, you know, yeah. Still am. And and uh, but at that time, recording content and then editing, learning to edit. I had no idea how to do any of that. Wow. So I had to teach myself that as well. I was just like, this is just not working. And so at the time we were getting maybe, you know, 200 views, 300 views here and there. And I said, I got to do this live. Got to do it live. Yeah, that's a huge component to yeah. it. I got to do it live and do it in a way where after the live, it'll be in a format that's still digestible and still able to be ported over to podcast format because I want to be able to reach everybody wherever they were right. with minimal editing time. So we can, you know, speed was, was certainly a factor. Um, but I didn't start doing the the live streams on YouTube. I started on Instagram. Okay. So me and my partner, Jay Ellis, at the time, we were doing the split when Instagram first brought in the split screen. 
we were doing our reactions there. And we, we were holding court. We would have between like, you know, 50 people sometimes, sometimes maybe 100 sometimes. And uh, ultimately, while we were doing that, I was investing in my studio, getting my professional equipment and getting ready to move it over to uh, YouTube where I could have the callers calling in and so on and so, so forth. So that IT background came in. Yeah, yeah. And and my own training, man, because like I said, I had, I had no broadcast background, no media background, so I had to teach myself everything. Uh, so ultimately, we, we moved from Instagram and started doing the live streams on YouTube. Were you working from nine to five and then bam, all night was Knicks Fan TV learning how to do these things? Yeah. Before my son was born, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And... Uh, you know, my son was born in uh, 20, he's going to be four this year. So, he, so he, yeah, so he was born in 2018. And uh, and so that was difficult. So I'm not right. you know, nine to five, full time dad. Then he's down and then it's Nick's game from seven o'clock. And then straight through it's, you know, chopping up content or moving the content to, to the podcast or learning how to do these things or to fine tune those skills. So it was a lot of work. It is a lot of work. It still is. Yeah. It's a lot of sacrifice. But I realize over time is that when you don't mind doing it and you don't mind, you know, the four or five hours of sleep every day, then you've truly tapped into your passion. Yeah. Right. And I wasn't making money at that time either. So I didn't really care because I, I was loving doing I was truly loving everything, you know. And so, yeah, it was, it was rough, but it was it's worth it. Was there ever a moment when you're getting like 50 or 300 views where you're just like, and you're tired, mm -hmm. so some bullshit pops up at the day job and you're yeah. like, why am I doing this? Yeah. Or when the team is losing. Remember, they they, they had a 17 win season right. the, the year after. Oh, my they, they God. Got yes. Right. So, and that turned into RJ. So 17 and 65. And I didn't miss one night of a post game show. So wow. 82 games. But 65 of those were losses and bad losses. So, yeah, what are you talking about after that? It's like broken record. Uh, you no, know, you're right. But, you know, I just felt like it was important to have that platform be available for people to call in and, and, and voice their opinion. I never really saw it as as a job or, you know, some daunting task. Yeah, some nights you're like, damn, I, I don't even know how it can go on. But. Once you go on and you get into the groove, it's like any other night, win or lose. Was there ever a moment you were going to quit? No, because, you know, o over my lifetime, I probably tried to start a couple of side businesses, right? I tried uh, selling sneakers, sneaker accessories. I tried uh, an online tutoring company, all these things. And I quit early for one because I didn't have patience I think my mindset was in the wrong place. I was looking to get money right away and it just wasn't my passion. So I didn't really care whether I was getting it or not. And so when I started this, I said, I'm going to keep it consistent. You know, consistency is a thing that I always heard with like some of the great performers or the great um, anybody and anything that they're doing, you know, whether you're reading the books or you listen to them on podcasts, they always talk about, you know, keeping it consistent. I say, you know what? I'm going to give my all to this thing and just see where it goes. And I'm not going to stop. Wow. And so that's, you know, that's why I was just like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to quit because I just saw the opportunity with people cord cutting and going to more niche platforms and wanting to be around communities and authentic voices. So I just felt like that it was that the white space was there to tap into. Yeah, looking at Premier League and seeing seeing that model and transferring it to the NBA, especially mm -hmm. in New York, was, was very smart. Um, but it's a lot of work. A ton of work. It's a lot of work. Did you have like a stretch or a viral video or something mm -hmm. that is like, okay, this is starting to get legs? Or, or was it just a slow build? Yeah, so when the Knicks were rumored to get Katie and Kyrie, Mm. And at that time, like and I said, Zion's coming. The Zion and, thing. Mm. So I looked at it, I said, let me tell you something. If I if we get these three guys, this thing is going to the moon. Like <laughs> right. forget about it. I'm yeah. trying, I'm trying to prepare myself for a phenomenon because this thing is gonna take off. And then when we didn't get them, 
I was like, oh, shit. I was like, what the hell am I going to do? Like, when that free agency came and KD put his announcement on, on Instagram and he's going to the Nets, number one, I was crushed. Yeah. Because I felt You're like, like and it was Julius LeBron. Randall. Everyone. It was LeBron in the heat all over again. <laughs> yeah. Number two, I'm like, what the hell's going to happen? Like, we're not going to grow. Right. And we never stopped growing. Yeah. That night we got Julius and Bobby Portis, all these guys. I had videos with like 50,000 views. And at that time, I'm like in the teens of subscribers. So we kept growing. And you were just there. You're the only voice that was there. There were others, but we were the best. Right. Just to put it out there. You know, I'm a humble guy, but we were the best. No, no, no. But yeah. There's no one even close to what you're right. doing. Right. And so even when we were signing, you know, Taj Gibson, Alfred Payton, people were still coming. They were still coming. And, and we grew, you know, twice as much exponentially. And so that's why I was like, all right, we're on to something. Again, keep it consistent. Keep it going. And then... The next point where I wondered about, you know, pivoting was, you know, we're in the 2019, 2020 season, all of a sudden the pandemic hits and the season stops. So in the middle of February, and so typically you have your content calendar where you're going to do your post games after each game, then you're going to segue into draft, free agency, it's kind of laid out. So at that time, I'm like, shit, what the hell am I going to do? What are we going to talk about right. you know, to stay consistent? And that's when I started tapping into um, player interviews. A friend of mine had reached out to me and, and he was like, uh, he was always telling me, he was like, get the X-Man on the show, Xavier McDaniel. Yeah. He was a Nick for the one year, 91, I remember him. That, that, that's my, um, that's probably my intro to basketball was yeah, that time. Yeah. And, and I don't think there's, there's, I don't think there's any Nick that's more of a fan favorite in that short amount of time. One year, yeah. the next man. There's there's no way. Yeah. But he kept telling me all oh, year. He's like, get him on your show. Get him on your show. And so when we got him on the show during the pandemic, he hit us with so many sound bites that the thing went through the roof. Really? And to this day, between his interview and the micro content that we repurposed, I think it summed up to like 400,000 views. Wow. It's crazy. From Xavier McDaniel. Xavier McDaniel. 400,000 views. That's even crazy yeah. that that's where you went to get an interview. Like who would have yeah. thought Xavier McDaniel and then yeah. he just brought the goods. Yeah. And then prior to X-Men, it was actually Charles Oakley. That was the first one during the pandemic. Oh, you got Oak. We got Oak. And Now what connects are you getting... To get Oak, you get there's just some through the grapevine. You just need no. Somebody. This is this is through uh, Chuck D. Oh, uh, Chuck. Public Enemy fame, and uh, he's been the number one supporter of of the show. The number one supporter of me. You know, he's become like a friend and a mentor to me. Was it you started. knew him from through somebody, or just like he saw it and just started? There was a random time, me and. Uh, and, and my, my old partner, JLs, we were walking into a Knicks game. And as we were walking into the game, we were just talking about just content strategy and, and how we were going to move forward. And um, I told him, I was like, we got to stick with YouTube because you just never know who's watching. You know, you just never know. So we have to stick with YouTube, improve ourselves, improve our delivery, our, our presentation, everything, because you just never know. You know, YouTube's two billion people on YouTube on a yeah. daily basis. You just never know. And they're finding it through Google searches and that's it. Right after that, like literally right after that, that week, I got a, a notification on Twitter and it's from Chuck D. And it said, Yo, I just subscribed to Knicks Fan TV. Like, let's go or something like wow. that. Wow. And so I'm looking at this, I'm like, I don't know, maybe you got hacked or something. I don't <laughs> I don't you know what I'm saying? Like, I had no idea. And um over time, you know, our relationship just grew. Awesome. And, and it just grew. And uh, and so he connected me with Oak. You know, he connected me with Max, Alan Hahn. You know, Chuck has been, the thing about Chuck is that, you know, he understands the power of uh, championing a cause, being a champion of a cause. Yeah. And what that can do. You know, he's done it. In, in hip hop, whether it's for Busta Rhymes, Queen Latifah, you know, other artists and, and helping springboard their career. And so he's doing that for me now. So, you know, it, it's been um it's been a humbling experience. It's it's I'm super grateful for for his friendship and, and his mentorship. 
and you know the doors that he's helping open up for me i mean question that's an amazing lesson the fact that through blind faith you're having fun with something you're like we got to be consistent you never know who's watching to mm -hmm. have that kind of positivity and optimism as your steering force to then have somebody like chuck d who you're filling a void for him too he's part of this never, tribe never misses a show uh when i start my live streams i start it while the game is on so that there's a chat room going before i start my show and most of the time he's in there before i am wow he's talking to people and reacting to the game and stuff like that so he, he's he's been a driving force for us uh no question uh but so the oakley interview now and the funny thing about the oakley interview is that uh you know i told jl's i told my partner you know we had our outline of questions and stuff like that i said listen um this thing is probably going to go way off the rails. So just be ready because right. it's Charles Oakley. You know, he's a combustible personality. And so you got to be ready to pivot, you know, and and kind of kind of ride the bull wherever he's going. We got to go. So was this before or after the Dolan incident? This at was the after. Garden? After. This was oh, after. Man. So who knows where this was going to go? Right. So so we interview an Oak man and, and this thing just goes as I thought. Just a, just a whirlwind. How about Patrick Hume? I don't know. I don't deal with Patrick. Patrick, I don't even why not, talk to Why Patrick. not? Yeah, what what happened with that man? You you you, well, you said Patrick was, was soft. I mean that 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 was that was your man for I mean, almost ten years. If so. I said you already heard it, so why I gotta repeat myself? You know, yeah. ups and downs and so many emotions and and it's getting heated, it's getting tested, and then it's getting friendly and cool. And but ultimately, this was during the pandemic, and ultimately, that was the first time when the sound bites from our show were. Um, presented on a national scale so michael k show was reacting to it really and, and nbc sports was covering it so the new york post was covering it so that was the first time when you know Knicks fan tv content really shot out there on the mainstream what's that interview because that was the time when again the league had stopped and so there was really no content for these beat writers and these sports reporters to cover there were no Knicks games wow and so that was a big moment for us that, that was a big moment. Was that for before us. the X-Men interview? That was before. But what happened was Oakley, because I, I, I triggered a nerve with Oakley because he, he had said, you know, some some negative things about Patrick Ewing. That's uh, Don't talk about my man. Katrin wrote eight book reports on Patrick Ewing. It's yeah. like the second love of my life. I love yeah. Patrick Ewing. I cried him many a nights. That's that's my hero, man. And he always called Patrick Ewing soft and this, that, and the third. And, and so I, I, you know, asked him about it. And, and so he commented on it, how, you know, uh, you know, he didn't have my back during the Dolan situation. And so either way, I brought that up with X-Men in his interview. I said, Hey, here's, here's what Oakley said about Patrick Ewing. What do you think? And in his comment, it was basically like, you know, well, you know, Oakley used to, you know, miss shots left, right, and center. He was, he was, oh, he took shots, <laughs> took at, shots Oak. at Oak Ugh. and that video which I cut out of the bait interview, went viral. Oak would miss a wide open layup. Let's mm. just be honest. Sometimes he'd be wide open, Mr. Layup. <laughs> <laughs> that soundbite from that X-Man interview, remember I told you it was 400,000 views. That one alone is 200, represents 200 plus wow. thousand. Just taking that swipe. Just taking that swipe. Wow. That five minute soundbite was, was, was incredible. And it all snowballed together, right? All you snowballed You together. had... You had Oak on. He took a shot. You followed up. Hey, you did the right thing. Yeah, like yeah. you, the next interview you had, you you brought up something relevant uh -huh. that the fans were were responding to, and gold happened. It was, it was gold. It, it was and then gold. there are subs coming from that, like those four hundred thousand views. Amount. Tremendous amount. Yeah. Right, because it's just awareness, right? Like, oh wait, yeah. there's a there's a Nick centric thing. But we have nothing. Yeah, we don't yeah. have that. Mm -hmm. We we get five minutes on the fan. That's it. So, you know, throughout the pandemic, it was just, I, I think because the fact that people were home for the most part, right? you know, they, these guys, sometimes they're not available. Sometimes they don't want to do interviews, but the fact that they were home, we were able to roll off guy after guy after guy. So after Oak, we had X-Men, then we had Rasheed Wallace, which is one of my, you know, favorite guys. I love Sheed. I would, I would argue that him and... Him and X are like yes. the guys and the stints that no question. the fan base really clung to. Yeah, no question. And then the thing about Sheet is like, you know, he, he was never really a big media guy. Yeah. So for him to really trust me with that interview, that meant a lot to me. And he gave us an hour and plus. It was fantastic. Uh, we had Kenyon Martin. We had Derek Harper. 
uh, Charlie Ward came on. We had um, a number of guys. So you got all the alum. Jamal Crawford. Yeah, we, we had a we had a number, and and I was just running them off. And it's wow. so that filled the void that got me through ten months of no basketball. It was just storytelling, you know, of of you know, kind of the glory days. Wow. Now that you had that success and you started to grow this audience, what's the day to day like Mm -hmm. to run Knicks fan TV? Like how much work goes into this? Yes, it's 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 a lot of work, man. But, you know, I I think the fortunate thing is that as we've been able to grow uh, and, and grow our resources, we've been able to scale. And so before when it was a one man show with me hosting, producing, you know, Put cutting up audio, cutting up social media content. Now it can kind of delegate those tasks. Now I've been able to build out Knicks Fan TV. So, so the day to day on a game day, it, w- it would look like number one, I'm I'm doing research on the team. You know, where are we right now? How do, how do we look in the standings? What are some key stats right now? Uh, where are we trending in terms of the stats? And then I'm researching the opponent. So I'm reading up on on blogs that are covering the opponent podcasts. You know, how is that opponent trending? How do these two teams match up? Where are the statistical advantages that we have over them? Where are the statistical advantages that they have over us? And so when I'm doing all that homework, I'm kind of pulling out. Here are some areas that I'm going to look at in this game to see, okay, is is my hypothesis right? You know, the key storylines that I want to hone in on on this game and let's see what happens. And so I'm talking about those things for the post game. So you spent a couple hours researching everything. That's going to take some mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. A couple hours researching and then we watch the game, the whole game. And then at that point, then we go live. And so we'll do our live show. We'll, we'll capture the fan reactions. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll cut to any sound bites that might be out there on social media and, and so on and so forth. And then after that, we... Uh, we'll prepare the show for the audio format for the for the podcast. So before I was doing it myself, now I have a dedicated uh, editor and producer who will clean up the sound, you know, cut out any dead spots, so on and so forth, right. and present it, make it presentable in podcast format. And then we will. I'll work with my video editing team to say, okay. Here's the sound bites that we want to cut out for Instagram, for Twitter, for Facebook, for uh, still images for the YouTube community. So, we'll, so you're we'll, working into the wee hours of the night. That's I was but until I started scaling up. Right. And so as then, as money came in, you were just investing everything, everything back into Knicks everything, Fan TV. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. And like the money's coming in through YouTube monetization mm-hmm. and sponsorships. For well, the most part, I, I think the, the best thing about being an independent, uh, you know, content creator, media brand is that you have so many lanes or revenue streams that you can tap into. But starting with YouTube, yes, it, you, you know, you have a YouTube ab- advertising network. You have your fan donations, which has become big. Uh, we've uh, branched out into merch. We, we have the Knicks Fan TV snaps. Yeah, I see we people wearing it. Knicks Fan TV shirts, right? And, and uh you have uh, events. You know, we do a couple events a year where we partner with uh, other uh, fan groups, and and we do our group sales events at Madison Square Garden, which is always great. So you have different revenue streams that you can tap into, and then you know, as you said, once that comes in, I figure out, okay, how do I take more off of my hands, put right. it into the experts' hands, and and you know, the overall goal is to give the audience who have been loyal and supportive to me a better, a better, a better experience. And so that's enhancing my equipment. You know, I just purchased shore mics of my own and yeah. a nice boom arm, uh, enhance the lighting on my backdrop and yeah, I, made I, it a more professional. I saw that set change and I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> right, right. Things are going good for Knicks fan that's TV. Right. That's right. And, uh, you know, again, bringing on uh, talented video editors, which is everything in this, right. you know, digital age, social media age that we're in. Um, uh, bringing on more more collaborators w- with me that that can come in and and uh, you know certainly invest in in that talent. So and you didn't go to school for any of this. None of it. None of it. So obviously yeah. a really smart guy. You're Appreciate you're starting a, a media company mm-hmm. with just on the fly. Like mm-hmm. it's impressive to see you Thanks. scale up and to to figure out even how to bring in all these revenue streams. Mm-hmm. 
and to to figure out the production because you have high production high Appreciate quality it. production value for a live show mm -hmm. like i used to do work at si and there's an army that built a network for them and mm -hmm. your views are are rivaling some of their live shows mm -hmm. like that's super impressive thanks for for such a it's also such a niche they're talking national you're you're in a small pool of knicks fans now mm -hmm. there's a lot of us mm -hmm. But uh, that speaks to to your metal and, and your passion for this and and obviously who you are as a person. So even though I didn't go to school for this, you know, how they always say you, you need that like 10,000 hours of mastery. Right. Yeah. I think listening to sports radio on a daily basis, day in, day out. I feel like that really helped me. Yeah, that was my training, listening to how, you know, Mike engages with the fans or the Mad Dog engages with the fans or. I was in and out of that every single day. So I think that was really part of the training. And yeah. then there was other things that I, you know, that I wanted to learn that where, you know, the passion for all this really, really carried me. So um, I think one of the things that I was most proud of, I was just talking to one of my AV guys uh, on, on Monday, was that we did a live show uh, during the Knicks home opener against the Celtics this past one from Mustang Harry's in New York City. Salute to Knicks Nation, special edition of Knicks Fan TV live from Mustang Harry's here in New York City, a couple blocks away from Madison Square Garden. And and we streamed it to the channel and it was a it was a three-man production. And it was quality that I would compare to an ESPN set where you know you have a hundred guys in a truck, so on and so forth. We did it with three guys, wow. a Wi-Fi connection, and it was a hit. It, wow. was, it was it was we had a hundred people for the for the actual event at the bar supporting us for the home opener, and then you know thousands at home watching and and it was it was incredible. The guys that 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 I've been able to interact with from the community like the Allen Hans and 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 Max and so on it's it's uh it's incredible man you know it's, yeah like when they call you on to come on ESPN what what's going through your mind who was the yeah. first person to put you on a platform like that was it Allen it, it was Max oh, it was Max it, yeah Allen came on my show. Yeah, he's, oh, he's been Alan on my came show. came on your show, yeah. Yeah, so so we do, now we, we kind of make it a ritual where we do a, uh, he's been on it twice, where we do a season preview show. So before the season starts, he'll come on and it'll be me and him and, and we'll, you know, preview the key storylines of the season and then bring in the fans. Those shows hit 100,000 views both years. And mm. so that's been a big. I mean, one. you two together is a yeah. powerful combo. Yeah, like yeah. that's always good. And two Long right Island there. guys, so you yeah. know we we banter back and forth very well. And so I, I like our chemistry. And then with Max, you know, the Max thing started as it started as you know me versus him. The Knicks fan versus the sellout Knicks fan. It's like it's like their bar mitzvah all of a sudden. 18 and 17, Casey, who cares? Listen, ESPN cares. This is why I'm here on the Max Kellerman Show. It is the talk of the town. The New York Knicks are the, the story of the, of the first half of the NBA. Put some respect on our name. <laughs> right. And it's it was I thought it was just gonna be one show where me and him were just going back and forth. And then he invited me back for another. And then and then another. And then Ultimately, he positioned me as not just a Knicks fan, but an NBA analyst. Yeah. So it. Well, so you it, are. I mean, you you give those it. your breakdowns are as good as anybody else. Appreciate it. And so 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 the Max series evolved from just a Knicks fan squabble to us talking about the key storylines in the NBA playoffs overall, not just Knicks, but everything. And so that was like eight to ten weeks. I'm going on weekly on the Max Kellerman show, and then doing my own show on WFAN, you know, the, the platform that I grew up right. idolizing and, and walking into that studio, sitting in the chair that, you know, Mike Francesa sat in and, and all these guys, it was crazy. I was able to host uh, uh, a, a Knicks-centered show. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, State of the Knicks, man. It was a, it was a major, major moment, man. It was a major moment. I think that's hard for people to understand outside of New York is that like, our sports radio, before everyone had their own podcast mm -hmm. that they listened to, mm -hmm. our sports radio is like a part of our DNA in the tri-state area. Mm -hmm. Like it's every time you're in the car for a lot of people, it's the yeah. voices. They feel like your friends. It's just like it it keeps you like so united as a city. No question. It must have been amazing to sit in Mike's chair and do that. Incredible. The diehard Knicks fan is passionate. At times they're delusional, but they're very smart. They're very savvy. It was incredible, man. I still can't believe I was able to do that. 
Uh, so I, I definitely appreciate them for giving me that opportunity for sure. And so now you're getting all these opportunities. Talk to me about what just happened at NBA Radio on Sirius XM. Yeah, so I literally just signed a contract with, with NBA Radio and Sirius XM to uh, to cover uh, the post game shows. So literally just started with them. So you know we'll see how that evolves. But you know how does that impact Knicks fan TV though? Oh, it won't. It, it won't. Yeah. So it's Knicks post game shows. No, no, no. This will be covering the NBA. So end Post of the night shows. kind yeah, of deal. end of the night type of deal. So you're going to put in Knicks fan TV and then we'll go. Put in work. Put in we'll work, put man. Put in work, man. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. CP the franchise, the name has to come out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great name, by the way. Thanks. Who thanks. Did you, this, you came up with that name or somebody handed it to name. you? I, I came up with the name. It's amazing. It's, it's, I'm for the fans, by the fans. So yeah. that, that you but, know, it kind of just rolled off. You know, now, did you play basketball? Where Where is all this knowledge coming from? I did. I did. I did play basketball at the high school level, not the not the collegiate. Yeah. Level. Collegiate was more because, like you know, your stuff intramurals. And, you know, as you get older, you, you start getting distracted by, you know, uh, women and things of that nature. So, yeah. you know, you kind of fall off. But um, no, overall, man, it's just just loving the game. Right. I never missed a Knicks game for 20 years. Rarely. The, even the terrible years. Even Isaiah years. Even Isaiah years. I'm watching every game, every night. Every game, every night. I don't miss a Yankee game. I don't miss a Giants game. So yeah. where do you see this thing going? Where, what would you like to see yeah. Knicks fan TV become? You know, I, I certainly have goals for it that, you know, some I got to keep, you know, close to the vest because uh, competition could be watching. You know, you got to keep yeah. it close to the vest. But yeah, how many copycats? Oh, there's a lot, man. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's, Saw your success. There's the a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. But, you know, I I look at it as a good thing because I, I have a lot of people who message me and say, hey, you know, I want to get started. Hey, you inspired me to do this. Um, you know, I have people who, who will message me and say, hey, you know, during that pandemic, you got me through a dark time. So I, I, I look at it. I value what I do. And even if people want to start their own platform, I want my platform to be that inspiration, right? Uh, especially, especially uh, people in my community, African Americans, or or you know, kids out there who maybe want to jump into the game, but maybe only see it as if I don't make it as a player, I can't make it. I want to be able to show them, you know, you can jump into this, into this space as a content creator. And right. speak to athletes. Maybe you want to be a GM. I'm bringing on GMs to to show you the inside. What's it like, you know, at the draft? What's it like as covering free agency? What's it like at the trade deadline? You know, I'm bringing on former GMs to talk about their experience and give fans that behind the scenes look. So I kind of want to be that inspiration for others to start their own thing. Because as we talked about at the beginning of this interview, it's very hard to crack into this thing. And right. that's why I never did in the beginning, whether it's in media or you know, in a front office or whatever it is to crack in with your favorite team or league. It's very hard to get in. Right. So I like having this platform to kind of be an inspiration to others to start their own thing. I mean, what I said before is we're celebrating people that live on their own terms, but like mm -hmm. the fact that you don't have to answer to an ESPN, you, mm -hmm. you can, you don't have to have, you know, these gatekeepers tell you what you can and can't talk about or yeah. to say, Hey, bring up Tim Tebow every seven minutes. Like you don't have to do that stuff. Yeah. So those days are over, man. Uh, so you're going to get offers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Obviously, NBA is one of them, but you're going to get a lot of offers from mm -hmm. places. I, I foresee that definitely being on the table for you. Is it? Is this something that you think that you can build and maybe open the gates up to do other things? Yeah. Um, or is there a party that always wants to stay independent? That part of me wants to stay independent because as you say, you know, I don't have to answer to anyone. I can say what I want. I can keep it authentic. I, I, and I, and I keep it respectful at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? One of the key slogans that, that the fans uh, know me by is that my show's a family show. I don't curse on my show. I don't encourage people to curse on my show because I want families to be able to drive in the car, listen to it with their kids of all ages. It's what I did when I was a kid. So I want this show to appeal to everybody. Uh, now, if me and you are at a bar watching the game, then then yeah. you know we'll we'll keep it a hundred, hundred. You, you can't you can't be a Knicks fan and not curse. That's, that's right. Not, that's right. That's, that's right. Not. Even on my show, yeah, sometimes it'll slip out. But overall, I want to broaden broaden that appeal. So, I I think long term for me, I I want to keep it independent, um, because I this I I love what I'm doing, 
and I love connecting with people. You know, on a nightly basis, you know, a post game show on my show, you may hear from somebody from yes, the tri state area, in New York, but I'll have my guy Greg from Vietnam calling. Shut up, really? Hundred percent. Greg like, from Vietnam. Greg from Vietnam. He's trolling you. He's from Bayonne. He's a guy, <laughs> man. I'm telling you. Uh, we have Greg from Vietnam. We've had guys calling from Israel. We have guys calling from Belize. Uh, uh, we have guys calling from. We have a big Germany, Australia, Austria contingent. Australia, New Zealand. We have a lot of guys calling in from there. The UK, France. You know, we, we this is a global, global thing, and and that's really never been done. Um, until the advent of social media, which is where we can connect globally. So it's, wow. I, I think, I think the, the national appeal, I would never turn those opportunities down, but I look at those opportunities as a way to um, continue to build my brand. But at the same time, I'd like to stay on, on the independent side because I, I just think that's where, I think that's where things are going. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's where thing that's where we are, not just going. That's where we are. Right yeah, like now. everything is getting more niche on it's ev- niche. Right. You want you just want to be get direct to the point of what you're interested in. So yeah. if I want Nick's content, I don't want to sit through forty minutes of Jets talk. I don't want to do it. I right. just want to know, like, are we going to get a point guard? Right. What's the deal with <laughs> right, Mitch? Right, right. Who are we going to pass on yeah, in the draft? Yeah, that's going to yeah. piss me off. Yeah. Is it hard to stay positive? And oh, then yeah. You do a good job of, of, of keeping it real, but there's mm-hmm. always a, a tinge of optimism, which I think is necessary. It's very necessary. Very necessary. Is that, a, is that by choice that like, hey, guys, we're going to keep it positive, but be real about certain things? Um, no, I think, you know, when it's, when it's necessary, I'll come down on the team. I have no problems coming down on the team. I think at the trade deadline, I was very disappointed that we weren't able to offload some of the veteran yeah. contracts and get some of the younger guys playing time. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, I, I do try to keep it positive because I t- I say this all the time. The NBA is the hardest league in sports to build a championship contender because I think a lot of luck plays into yeah. it. You have to get lucky in terms of your draft position. You have to get lucky that the kid that you pick turns into right. the next star. It's a star driven league at the end of the day. Yeah, And so but I am positive because I feel like this regime, even though they haven't hit the home run yet, they've still hit a lot of singles and doubles and, you know, everything hasn't been perfect, but they also haven't mortgaged the farm for right. nominal gains. So I am a little bit optimistic. I think on a scale of one to 10, I would say maybe six and a half, seven right now. You know, when when have we drafted second round gems? That's like Spurs... Shit, and yeah, that's yeah. what Leon Rose and and World Wide West yeah. is doing. So, look, I, I don't think there's been any been a time in our history where we've had this many um, promising youngsters. Whether it's R.J., I think Quentin Grimes is yeah, a guy love who's going to be a fixture in our rotation. I think Emmanuel Quickly yeah. is another guy who could be here. Um, I could see him getting traded though. I hope not, man. I, I like hope Quick. not too. I like Quick I, too. I like, uh, he's we got a Sixers offense, fan in the house, and I like to say that every time Tyrese Maxey has a good game, like he's looking like more like Quickly every day. Get he gets so pissed. Here, he gets so pissed. <laughs> Are you kidding? He's almost like IQ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why he likes the Sixers, Ooh. but yeah. he's a new, he's a New Yorker. He's New Jer- he's a New he, Jersey oh, guy, Jersey but he's a guy. West Jersey guy. All right, okay. he might as well be Pennsylvania. Okay, all right, that's understandable. Listen, I, it's Isaiah understandable years are tough. With his it's situation. never, too, it's never Starberry? too late to turn sides. Yeah, come to the late, come man. to the good side. His Sixers fandom. He has an amazing picture with Joel and we met Joel and beat at a Sports Illustrated swimsuit event because he's dating one of the girls. There's an amazing picture of those two nice, together. Nice. <laughs> Is he picking him up like over the threshold? <laughs> he should have. No, he was not happy. One person smiling, one person is not in the He's photo. He's not picking him up over the threshold. It's not too late to turn back. Oh, yeah. That's oh, a, yeah, the yeah, process. Yeah. Is yeah, the, not too thrilled. Yeah, yeah. the process. He's yeah. not too thrilled. He's like, there's birds fans here? Yeah. Shit. Sixers. I, we let it slide. I like Maxie, though. Man. I, yeah, yeah, I like Maxie. I like Maxie a lot. I actually uh, wanted Maxie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the Knicks did, too. I think there will come a time when the pressure is going to build on Leon Rose to really make a move. This is where you play a pivotal role, though, because you got to get yeah. the dogs to not bark on Dolan to oh, make a move. They're barking on tips, not Dolan right now. Well, that's, you know, coach yeah. change is fine, but it's when we do like a massive clean the slate or yeah. mortgage everything for one guy. Right. Like 
And a lot of times I think the fans don't realize that we're part of the problem. Like yeah. the more you chatter on the fan about wanting to mortgage everybody to go get Donovan Mitchell or somebody yeah. that like Dolan might listen. <laughs> so oh, be he careful. Does. He does. <laughs> he careful. absolutely does, man. He absolutely does. And, you know, it's funny when you say the fan is a problem. Uh, Julius Randall's wife <laughs> uh, <laughs> took me to task. She said as, you were being too hard on Julius. Yeah, he needed it, though. part of the problem. Let's be real. He needed it. He did. And after the whole thumbs down fiasco, mm -hmm. right, that was a bad thing for him. You know, and, and this is New York. And New Yorkers don't forget that, especially when you're playing bad. They're never going to forget that, especially when Obi Toppin is yeah, breathing yeah, down yeah. his neck. They're never going to forget. And and one day, I think, I think fan interaction with players is, has been kind of a trend this year. In terms of uh, you know the, you know LeBron had an incident in Indiana, Russell Westbrook's had a couple. But those of are incidents. people being way out of line, right? But Julius's incident was thumbs downing to the fans, yeah, at a home game mm -hmm. in the middle of uh, of a Knicks run to try to win a game. Yeah, and I Which feel like Knicks fans were being pretty loyal to Julius. We we were. I I thought so. Yeah, yeah, you know, one minute he's he's the MVP. He's at the line in the preseason game. We're chanting MVP. Yeah, and so. And, yeah. deep, and deep down, we know you're not an MVP. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> right? But we're still proud. But we will right. ride with you. We'll ride with you. You yeah, know? That's yeah, the yeah. thing about New York, man. When, when you're on top, you're on top. And um, so one day on Twitter, uh, the, there was news about uh, Westbrook's wife had complained about um, fans wishing them ill will on social media. And uh, through six degrees of separation, um, I was connected to his wife through someone who I had worked with. So I had said, you know, this is my, this is my guy, Jeff. This is, you know, this is not cool. So I had retweeted that article. I said, you know, I never encourage fans to go at players personally. I never do that. I think it's very cringe. I don't like when people go at players and disrespect the craft. I hate that. And so I just retweeted on Twitter. I said, you know, this is not cool. Let's not address these players directly you know when we have our forum and we talk about the game keep it in the forum you yeah. can say whatever you want about these players on my show yeah, yeah, yeah but don't attack them Yeah, their kids are on you know don't attack them and so i put that tweet out i went out about my day hours later i come back i got a notification from julius randall's wife well how could she have issue you did the right thing you, you said the right thing right and basically in a sarcastic way thought you know, by I, that, that I wasn't being genuine in my response. And so we had a back and forth. And I said, look, I, I don't want to attack you guys personally. And she basically replied and said, you know, it's not you. But no, no, no. She said, uh, you and platforms like you contribute to this environment that cause us pain. So save your sympathy. I and this, <laughs> it was crazy, man. Platforms like you also yeah. like are, are what keeps the thing going right we and are, you're giving yeah. legit critiques legit critiques just as just as skip bayless and Stephen a is doing yeah, yeah. they're even worse that's it they're they're going for clickbait mm -hmm. god knows skip is just going for the jugular yeah. he's trying to just piss people off yeah uh. when the guy has a great game we, we praise him like the king last season when he had the most improved player season I talked so highly about the guy. Yeah, you're even telling people, like, we can't trade him. Be loyal. I'm defending him against Max Kellerman. Right, <laughs> you right. Know? Which it's, is more, like, probably the real take, right? Yeah. Like, maybe we should if we can get something yeah, good. You yeah, yeah. So, you know, she propped me up as, like, the puppet master here. And that, that you were inciting the fans. I was inciting. Him. That's not, then inciting. they don't know New York. Because they don't need you to incite themselves. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. funny moment. Wow. Did you mention so, it all on the show? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty I, cool I, I that they know to. about the show, though. I mean, that's, yeah. let's take that. Right, right. Even though they're not fans and, and you know. I, but I, you I are aware of my platform. Man. Right, right. So <laughs> I, I think it spoke to spoke to the influence um, um, that we had. And, and it spoke to the fact that these players, I know players that do watch the show. You know, not just Julius, but other players on the team do watch the show and are fans of the show. But not not the Randalls. Now, you had Fournier on, right? I had Fournier on. The only is that the interview. first? Is that the first player active player that has been on the yes. show and the only interview that he did when he got here he didn't do espn he didn't do wfan he didn't do anything he came on he knows what's up Knicks fan tv oh uh, he gets some props for that yeah yeah 
even though you're trying to get everyone to off- offload his contract. Yeah, which, well, right, right, right. But we all I gave know. him a lot of love for that. You know? <laughs> I, I gave him a lot of love for that. We're a platform that we're going to keep it real 100% of the time. Yeah. And we're going to try to keep it respectful. And because we have had incidents where fans will leave a donation saying, you know, I hope so-and-so gets COVID or this. I don't read that. Right. Because I, I, I don't encourage that. And when, you know, fans would call in because this kid gets a lot of like attention in the media. But like, you know, I have a thing against, you know, really putting kids out there. On yeah, media and that's stuff off like limits. That. I don't know I, where this became a me, thing. Man. Yeah, off limits. So whenever fans would call and mention that, I don't even address that. I try to steer them off of that. And so I just presented my side of it. But we're always going to keep it real. And this is New York. It's a tough place to play. Yeah. Like things like saying Russell Westbrick and things like that, that comes with the territory. Yeah. But like putting your hands on Chris Paul's mom, right, or spitting right. on crossing, players, or throwing line, things, yeah. like that's crossing the line. Like you crossing should be line. banned from the garden forever yeah. for doing things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I got kicked out of the next game once. You did? You did? Oh, What'd no, you we got to hear that It was story. an accident. What'd you do? I was fucking around with a rubber band in a playoff game. <laughs> in a playoff game? And How old are you, 13? I was in plate. high school. I was a stupid kid. I, You know, you could wrap the rubber band around your finger and shoot it. And the security guard who knows us for 25 years put his hands on his head. I'll never forget it. His whole head wrinkled. He's bald. Put his hands on his head. He was like, oh. And his boss came down and was like, you gotta go. You gotta go. It's my two like guy friends that I brought uh, with me who were fans, and they were like, "Are you fucking kidding?" You gotta go. You so took us to a on playoff the game, and in the first quarter, oh, first you quarter. got us kicked oh, out. Oh my for, gosh. And it wasn't even anything cool. It wasn't like a good story. In in twenty five. So that's years, Allen Houston years. Yes. But clearly, those are good seats. That those was are a good. Flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, that was She's a good. A good. We were third, third row behind the other. There like, it is. Push out the corner, baby. We're taking it all the way. So, what is like the main platform that you would recommend to get YouTube numbers up? Is it mm-hmm. a Twitter thing? Is it Instagram? Oh, um, each platform is unique. So, some people on Instagram are loyal to Instagram, and they're not going to come yeah. to YouTube. Some people on YouTube are not going to go to Instagram, especially the older generation. Yeah. Twitter, same thing. And so I've kind of stopped worrying about promoting the show from other platforms and just trying to create content specific to those platforms where those people will digest it. And, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave our links. We'll still leave the links there. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave the links in the profile if you want to come to YouTube. But I think over time, I've realized that, you know, trying to cross promote, it'll get a couple of couple of guys coming over, but it won't be anything significant. I think YouTube drives itself. Sure, if 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 we have a big interview scheduled, we'll put that out there. Like, hey, we have so and so coming yeah. on, come through, and and you know, you, you'll you'll drive those numbers there. But by and large, we'll make Instagram content for Instagram. Uh, typically, if we do an Instagram reel, it'll be relatable for TikTok. So we're trying to grow our TikTok, right. trying to get that Gen Z, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, su- a subscribership sure. there. Twitter will be primarily uh, where I'll be engaging just on a, on a regular basis. And then we'll throw our content up there. So at, at this point, I've kind of tried, I've kind of steered away from promoting YouTube through those other platforms and just... Do you ever run ads? Mm-hmm. Or in the beginning, did you? In on Instagram, I've tried it. Yeah. It's been okay. You know, it's a lot of bots it, it, clicking those Yeah, ads. yeah. It's it's been okay. But other than that, no. You know what it is? The people are your promotion. Yeah. That share button is a powerful thing on all social media. Yeah. That's what drives the algorithm. Whether it's Twitter, in the retweet on Twitter, the share on YouTube. The uh, the the at or the DM or the share on Instagram, that's your promotion. All right. So, CP, what advice do you have mm-hmm. for YouTubers out there? So somebody that wants to be the next CP, the franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, first thing is consistency, because everything flows from there. You know, you have to be consistent uh, in the beginning. You're not going to have as many views. You're not going to make any money. And I think those two things is, is going to determine whether or not you're truly passionate about what you're doing. Right. Because 
you have to put in the time. If you're not putting in the time, you're really not going to get any of that. But if you're putting in the time and you're still not getting the, the views and the money, but you're staying consistent, ultimately it will come. Because once you know that that is your passion, you're going to, the feedback is going to come in. The feedback from your own viewers, the few viewers that you have, and the feedback from your own evaluation of what you're doing. Like, okay, this is working. This is not working. I need to upgrade this. I need to do this. You know, your fan base may say, you know, let's, you know, bring on this guy or do this with your content or uh, do this with your presentation, right? You have to, it, you have to tap into that feedback and invest in that. It's an iterative process, yeah. right? And, and so I think with work me- Work in progress. It's a work in progress. And For you sure. always have to um, keep learning. That's the one thing with me is that while I was being consistent, I was always trying to learn, right? I told you like I was learning how to video edit with Final Cut Pro, how to, you know, what is the equipment that I need to sound better? Um, I would tap into other interviewers to hear how they would interview so that I could sharpen up my interviewing skills. Yeah. It, how hard is it to do that when the views are like, well, 27 people watch this thing? It, it's not hard if you're passionate about what you're doing. Right. Because you're going to want to do it. And, and if you're passionate about what you're doing, you're going to believe in yourself anyway. So with that, it's, it's going to come. It, yeah. it, it, it's, it's going to come. You know, you just have to stay the course. Your rocket is flying high, my friend. I, I think that, you know, Knicks Fan TV is just getting started. I think once this team even has minimal success um, consistently, that your numbers are going to spike. God forbid we ever win a championship. You're, oh, gonna, you're having a float yeah. on Broadway. Oh, we're Don't definitely say in that God float. forbid. Yeah. Jesus Christ, it's been 30 years. Say God willing. <laughs> God willing. God yeah, willing. God willing. Sorry. God Canyon willing. Freudian Rose. slip. God forbid. The Canyon of Heroes. Hell would have to freeze <laughs> over for it to happen. Freudian Nick slip. God yeah. willing, not the, God the, forbid. The Canyon of Heroes needs a Knicks parade. You yeah, know, yeah. I've been to several Yankee parades. I've been to two Giants parades. And, and it's, it's a time. great time. We need a next one. If we have a next one, it might be an it might be a city holiday. Shut this yeah. shit down. Shut it this might shit be down. shut down if the Knicks ever win a <laughs> Yeah, Patrick gets a ring. Whatever Patrick happens, yeah, gets yeah, a yeah ring. we send him a ceremony. We don't even ring. have yeah. to win. Just take us there. Well, I was at the Heat game where they dropped confetti mm. after the one mm -hmm, win against mm -hmm. LeBron. Now, I had never experienced a stadium like that before. Yeah. Like I was trying to tell tell my 76ers fan here, one win when we knew the series was over. <laughs> yeah. Dropping might as well Freddy. have been better than any Yankee <laughs> right, right. World Series I had ever seen. Right, That's right. Because right. for us, it's, it's a big different deal. here. The Knicks. Yeah. Is, uh, something yeah. about the Knicks. I mean, look, when they beat the Hawks in game two, I was at that. I was at the Hawks series game one through four. I traveled to Atlanta, too. But for game two, when we the only game we won, it was crazy. crazy. When I stepped outside, it was a parade in itself. They yeah. literally shut down 7th Avenue. There was no traffic coming through there was Knicks fans spilling out on the streets I was running into people you know fans of my channel it was crazy absolutely incredible and that was just one win the first win in eight years first playoff win in eight years wow it was an incredible experience just being out there man well incredible I think this is just the start for you I'm excited to keep you know watching you and seeing this grow and I Thanks wish you the lot. best of luck on NBA radio as well as on YouTube and uh you need to bring us that luck, CP. Absolutely, we man. Need, Appreciate it. Thanks again for having me on. Katrin, thank you for the cocktails. Yeah. You're welcome. When this Absolutely. blows up, I want you back Absolutely. and you tell us uh, what it's like on the other side. Any Anytime, man. Thanks again for having me on. All right. Zucks, send it to the internet, my friend. <laughs>